Natasha got her PhD from UT Austin and then went to CMU and worked there with Ed Clark for some time. And around 10 years ago, she came to Lugano and has been a professor there since. Uh, Natasha has worked on various aspects of program verification, including model checking, SAT solving, SMT solving, uh, interpolation, and she will talk about some of this work today. So welcome, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, I'm going to talk about Periplo. This is one of our projects in Lugano. So this is a flexible and generic framework for generation of interpol interpolants, which are widely used in program verification. So this is a joint work with my wonderful group. So in particular with my students, Leonardo Alt, Antti Hivarinen, who is a postdoc, uh, Grisha Fedukovic, and Simona Ralini. So uh, before I go into presenting you our framework on Periplo, I would like to give you an overview of what we do in Lugano. So this will help me actually to justify and motivate why we have this new uh, framework developed. And then I will focus on interpolation-based model checking, talk about uh, how it works, and talk about the existing problems with this, and then present our solution, the Periplo uh, tool. All right, so, uh, well, we do program verification, and uh, in particular, we focus on model checking software. We have a number of tools developed in our group in the last 10 years. So among them are tools called FunFrog, EvolCheck, LoopFrog. So uh, all of them, so most of them are focusing on verification uh, code. So in particular, on verification NCC standard. And as a support for all of these techniques we have for program verification, uh, we have a parallel track on the development of uh, SMT solver, which we believe is an essential part uh, in order to make a success, success in program verification. So our tool is called OpenSMT, and we have a lot of uh, developments on that front as well. So to be more concrete, so we are doing, of course, abstraction-based approach in order to make sure that uh, program verification is possible. So, and uh, among uh, many techniques which are possible as an abstraction, we are using interpolation. And we are using interpolation-based bounded model checking, BMC. So here are some uh, recent results on this front. Uh, in particular, we have a technique, a technology for automated interpolation-based function summarization. So the functions of the programs are summarized by means of Craig interpolants, and then this function summaries can be used for many different uh, purposes. For example, for verification of various versions of the same program, or for incremental verification of the program with respect to different properties. So then we have a technique for uh, automated uh, detection of recursion depths, which helps to uh, speed up BMC. And also we have a track on, on combining static and dynamic analysis in uh, verification aided regression testing. So uh, as part of all these exercises, at some point we realized that uh, not all interpolants are good so for particular tasks. So we have a whole study on analyzing uh, interpolants and comparing them against each other uh, with respect to their logical strengths. So this is a CAF uh, result in 2012. And then we have a, a whole track, one of the PG students graduated with this on uh, program summarization, in particular on loop summarization uh, using abstract interpretation uh, approach. And uh, the ideas on loop summarization have been uh, successfully used uh, to speed up program termination analysis. So, and yet another track is about combining various abstraction techniques, in particular in combining lazy uh, and imprecise analysis with uh, something uh, very precise in order to guarantee that counterexample guided abstraction refinement works nicely. So this is some of the results on abstraction-based front. So uh, on the same time, we're also using a lot of uh, analysis uh, using SMT-based approach. In particular, we have uh, a framework for analysis of programs with arrays, and it's well known that it's a highly complicated problem. So in here's some advancements which we made recently. Here, uh, so we have a quantifier free interpolation procedure introduced such that it extends lazy abstraction uh, with interpolation introduced by Ken McMillan uh, to a quantified level. 
and uh, we also identified a class of relations over arrays admitting uh, first order acceleration. And having that done, we, uh, well, the student implemented a tool called Booster, which is using an acceleration-based verification framework for analysis of programs uh, with arrays. So, as you probably already hear, so we're doing a lot of symbolic analysis, in particular, we're using a lot of SAT and SMT-based reasoning. And uh, as I said, this is the parallel track, uh, although it's very often interleaves with the other tracks on program verification. So here we have done uh, the following advancements to the state of the art. So we have a whole set of proof reduction and proof manipulation techniques uh, such that it improves uh, construction of interpolants. And we also have a new uh, concept of a proof-sensitive interpolation. So these two things I will talk more in detail later in this talk. So uh, we also just care about scalability of the uh, solvers. And for example, we have a recent result on parallelizing SMT solvers, so to speed up the analysis. And then we have procedures for bit vector extraction and concatenation and the generation of explanation and theory propagation. So all together, this uh, has been implemented in a tool which I already mentioned, it's OpenSMT, which combines Minisat to SAT Solar with state-of-the-art decision procedures for the following uh, theories. So it's extensible, so we have a nice infrastructure of the tool, so it's very easy to add new theories to, this, uh, to the tool. So it's incremental, it reuses a lot of information, so it's suitable for incremental verification. It's open source, everybody can get it, so feel free to download it and use it and to uh, add your material to this. So we already have a lot of people doing that. So it's parallelized, as I already said, using the efficient search space, uh, search space partitioning analysis, and it's quite efficient. We, we have been competing in the SMT competition since 2008, and uh, uh, periodically we got very nice results. So at some point we were winners in three categories. We even uh, outperformed the Microsoft Research Z3 tool. Well, they didn't participate that year. <laughs> well, we are out from the previous year version. All right, so uh, this is kind of a summary of what we do, and if anybody is interested, I will be happy to talk about any of these projects in detail. But now let me focus on interpolation-based uh, model checking. So this is the um, uh, focus of many of our projects, because we believe that interpolation really suits quite nicely for the purpose of abstraction. And abstraction is essential if you want to verify realistic programs. So this is the way to go uh, about combating the state space explosion problem. So there is a wide application in symbolic model checking, and here are just some classical examples where it's used. So for example, it was introduced by uh, Ken in 2003 uh, as a part of bounded model checking procedure. And then uh, later it was suggested to uh, use interpolation for refinement of spurious behaviors in the counterexample abstraction refinement loop. So then uh, it was further extended for property-based approximation relation and so on and so forth. By now, so more than 10 years later since it was suggested to be used in model checking, uh, just about any project which really wants to make sure that uh, program verification scales is using interpolation one way or the other. As I said, for example, in our group we are using interpolants to uh, construct and compute and reuse function summaries, which are, uh, happen to be very handy when you are addressing various problems. So all of this involves, of course, problem encoding into logic, at the SAT level or SMT level, and then solving the formulas by uh, means of resolution-based engines, such as SAT engines and SMT. So as you can see, the fact that we have a parallel track on development of our own SMT solver really helps us sometimes to guide the decision procedure towards the goal we have with respect to uh, model checking task. So, just to make sure we understand each other, uh, let me give you a little bit of definitions. I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. So Craig interpolation, so this is the old concept. And uh, essentially given a formula, A and B, which is unsatisfiable, we always are able to identify uh, 
a fragment i, which we call an interpolant, such that it is defined over common symbols in partitions a and b, and this uh, formula i is actually over approximation of a conflicting with b. So this is a formal definition, and it's really nicely suits to uh, abstraction uh, needs in formal verification. Just to be concrete, let's look at this very simplistic example. So I have two fractions, a and b, and they are unsatisfiable together. So the interpolant for this example would be a, a literal not q, as you can see. So fr fraction a implies not q, not q and b together are unsatisfiable, and it's clearly the interpolant, the Q, not Q is the uh, formula defined over the uh, literals shared between A and B. So this is what it is. So of course, in real life, things are more complicated. The formulas are of a huge size, and uh, the computation of an interpolant could be highly computationally expensive uh, procedure. So this is the graphical representation of exactly the same concept. So as you can see, uh, there are two uh, sets, A and B, which are together un unsatisfiable. You can always find the set I, which uh, is over approximation of A and still in conflict with B. So as you can see from this graphical representation, this uh, set i could be very different. So I can find many instances of i which still satisfies these properties. And this is exactly the problem in model checking that you can find many different uh, interpolants. And uh, the question is, which one is the best for program verification? How can we identify what suits us, what does not suit, and so on? All right, so overall, so it's widely acknowledged that size of interpolants, the size of the abstraction affects efficiency of uh, analysis and ultimately efficiency of the uh, program verification. So it's better and it's widely acknowledged that the smaller the uh, interpolant, the better the efficiency. So also it's been uh, recently observed that for different tasks, interpolants of different logical strengths are required. It's not always the case that we want to have the strongest interpolants, uh, interpolant, and it's really sometimes the case that we want only the, the, the strongest one. So, and however, the existing interpolation algorithms, they produce an and an interpolant, which is what it is, that's what's produced. And therefore, usually model checking tools simply take what they can get from a particular decision procedure and they have to live with this. So and it could be not the best interpolant. That's the point we are trying to say. Altogether, there is a, is a state of the affairs, is there is a whole bunch, there is a whole collection of individual algorithms, and uh, usually there is no way to choose, to figure out which one is better, unless you try, compare them against each other. So there is a huge overhead in uh, trying to find what you would possibly want. And of course, there are no possibilities for adjustment to particular model checking tasks. So, and uh, that's, what we decided to do, actually, to come up with this solution with a set of uh, ideas which would allow to address this problem. So we have a multipurpose interpolation framework which generalizi generalizes all the existing uh, mostly widely used uh, interpolation algorithms, plus it's we provide a new uh, formulation of interpolation in this uh, in this respect such that you would have the ability to tune it to modify on demand with respect to the task you're trying to solve so and i think uh, indirectly it solves the problem which arises in many other areas of uh, computer science in program verification that we have so many different tools they all wonderful and work nicely on a particular problem but if you try to reuse the techniques it becomes prohibitively impossible because of the different notations because of the different uh, encodings and so on so we decided to have something more generic with respect to this particular problem of uh, computing interpolants so the aim, of course, is that we produce the interpolants which are suitable for the whole range of uh, applications. So whatever the model checking task is, that should be suitable. So 
the emphasis is made, of course, on the construction of small interpolants because it's widely uh, acknowledged that small is being small is better. And this framework allows to have complete flexibility in strengths. So uh, any strengths you want, you can always adjust and ask the, in the framework to compute it as you want. So uh, Periplo actually combines a, a number of interesting results. So it's, uh, some of them are pre-processing approaches which uh, do proof transformation for uh, proof reduction and proof compression because it's also uh, commonly uh, acknowledged and witnessed in many experiments that if you have a compact proof, so the generated interpolant is going to be of a better quality. So also we have a techniques for proof manipulation which make particular decision procedures uh, for interpolant generation work better. So this also part of Periplo. And additionally, we have a completely new uh, approach for proof sensitive interpolation. So before this work, so interpolation usually was just not sensitive to the proof uh, it was uh, uh, using. Here's the bird eye view to our framework. So later we'll go into more details, but just to start with. So the application essentially is a model checking problem. So whatever task you're solving, and let's say we verify different versions of the same system and we want to see efficiently that the new version of the system still satisfies the properties which the original system was satisfying. So, and uh, for that particular problem, you might want to avoid repeating verification from scratch and to, and to use instead some sophisticated techniques which would help you to reuse information you already know from, from the previous verification runs. So, and for this particular instantiation of a model checking problem, you might need uh, uh, interpolants of a particular shape. So you might need interpolants of a uh, particular strength. So in that could be uh, communicated to the tool and the interpolant will be generated with respect to these requirements. So the flow is as follows. Essentially, the uh, model checking task produces a formula, which is an unsatisfiable propositional formula, uh, which is given to the solver. And this formula is going to be solved uh, by extracting a proof, compact proof skeleton from the SAT solver. Then this proof skeleton is going to be expanded to a resolution proof. Then the resolution proof will be optimized by means of various techniques to a smaller compact proof. And then the interpolant is going to be constructed from this optimized proof. So this is just a high level view. I'm not talking about uh, flexibility of interpolation yet, for example. I will talk about it a bit later. So the features of it, so it performs a basic interpolation following the definition as you already seen before. So it can also do variations. So it will construct pass, tree, and dug interpolation because for different uh, uh, tasks in model checking, sometimes it's required to have, for example, that the interpolant has a particular shape, such as three interpolant, for example. So, and uh, the example of this, for example, uh, I could give you as an example the problem of upgrade verification. So if you're using interpolants as function summaries, so this interpolants must satisfy the three interpolation property. All right, and then the proof optimization, and here's the list which is not exhaustive of the techniques implemented in Periplo. So this is the, most of these techniques are targeting to removing redundancies from the proof. And for example, uh, removing resolution steps which reintroduce already resolved pivot variables or postponing, to using, postponing uh, unit resolution steps until the end of the resolution proof and using different local rewriting rules which preserve the validity of the proof but minimize the proof at the end. So all of these techniques uh, have been uh, published and experimented uh, even before Periplo existed. So we just decided that it's really good time to combine the things together into a uh, joint framework. Uh, so uh, Periplo has a multifaceted interface, so it uh, has a clear API for C++ for tuning the interpolation algorithm, inserting formula into the tool, and uh, fetching the interpolant from the tool. So it's reading and writing using SMT2 lib standard, and it's also using IG format. So how we 
we are doing, how we are making sure that our framework is very generic. So we are using what is called a labeled interpolation system. It's a framework introduced by De Silva, who was doing his PhD here at ETH. And as part of his studies, he suggested uh, to have this LISP system. And uh, the idea is that in addition to the standard procedures for generation of interpolants, he suggested to have what is called a, a labeling framework. So this is how it works. So given uh, the uh, resolution proof and partitions uh, A and B, so and given some template for labeling of the variables inside of the proof, so the algorithm will generate the interpolant. And apparently this idea of labeling uh, was a nice generalization of already existing uh, tools, uh, decision procedures for interpolant generation. For example, uh, the one is called uh, uh, Macmillan Strong, uh, introduced by Ken, by Pudlak from 97, and by De Silva himself, uh, which is actually a dual of Macmillan Strong, so it's a Mac we call it Macmillan Weak uh, algorithms. So they are, in fact, the algorithms which are mostly used by uh, model checking tools in program analysis. So uh, let me just go into a little bit of technicalities so I would be able later to explain how flexible interpolation works. So given the resolution proof, let's say we have um, a function VC which denotes that the variable V occurs in the clause C of uh, resolution proof. The labeling function assigns a label from some set which contains three symbols A, B, and A, B to each occurrence in VC. So this is exactly how labeling function works. It just assigns the uh, labels to each clause uh, based on some prior analysis. So, and then given a propositional formula, which is a con uh, conjunction of uh, partitions A and, A and B, a variable can be either local if it only occurs in A or B, or it could be shared if it occur occurs in both A and in B fractions. So we say that the label is going to be local if uh, it assigns a uh, variable to fragment B, and it's going to be O to A, so uh, uniquely. So the label could be chosen freely for occurrences of shared variables. So, and what's interesting, in this labeled uh, interpolation framework, so tuning the label with respect to uh, shared variables could, could end up in resulting in different interpolation algorithms. So this is just the theoretical framework, once just to make sure you follow what I'm saying, which says how the, um, how the variables in your formula are going to be labeled. And this is the, just the set of rules, how they are labeled. Essentially, if the variable is shared, it can be labeled either way. And you can play with this, because you have the flexibility to label it anyhow you want. So in order to produce an interpolant, which is uh, different. So, and uh, what's interesting is that labeling all shared variables uh, as a results in the weakest interpolant. Labeling all shared variables as B results in the strongest interpolant. And uh, labeling all shared variables as fraction AB will result in food luck interpolant. So which is, in terms of logical strength, something in between between the weakest and the strongest possible interpolant. So prior to the um, introduction of this uh, lease system, so that was not known. So now we actually quite know how things could be related to each other. So what's uh, problematic with this, even though now we already have some sort of flexibility in how we can exp uh, compare interpolants against each other, so all of these approaches, as you can say, as you can see, have fixed schemas because they say exactly how the uh, clauses, how the variables should be labeled. So, and this fixed schemas is exactly the problem because if you want to do some tuning, the adaptation of the interpolant to a particular model checking task, you can't do much about it. So what Peripla does, it performs what we call a proof sensitive interpolation. So we uh, deliver a set of labeling functions that specifically address the interpolant size. So we just suggesting new functions 
la new labeling mechanisms, not as I just presented you before, such that uh, it will allow us to generate the smallest possible interpolants. So um, what's interesting is that, for example, labeling all occurrences in A as A and all occurrences I in B as B results in interpolant with the minimum number of distinct variables. And by analyzing the num of number of occurrences, it's possible to construct of interpolants that have a small number of connectives in the interpolant. And exactly this information allows us to define this uh, uh, flexible schema for labeling um, the uh, proof uh, structures. So essentially what we are using, we are counting the number of times a variable occurs in, in partition A. We count the number of times some variable uh, occurs in uh, partition B. And then the proof sensitive labeling function uh, says that I'm going to label a particular literal to A if um, the first function is bigger than the other one, if occurrence of uh, variable P in A is bigger than an occurrence in the fraction B, and vice versa. So simply by comparing how what the problem structure is, by analyzing what would be more suitable to be uh, labeled as a part of A or part of B, we are able to provide the proof sensitive interpolation. So, and in addition to this flexible schema, so which really uh, now coupled with the problem you're uh, solving, coupled with the proof which is given, so we are able to uh, provide versions which can, oh, once you have this interpolant, you can make it, make it stronger, you can make it weaker, uh, just in terms of uh, the strengths. Once again, you're just doing the proof sensitive uh, interpolation. So this the hierarchy in terms of the logical strengths. Uh, and uh, the Periplo will be able to generate you any interpolant from this um, schema. So this is a little bit of more detailed information about how it works. Once again, the application and the model checking task we are solving, and it provides to the tool, which is a SAT solver essentially, the formula. And uh, if the formula is unsatisfiable, so the proof is analyzed, so the application can suggest the partitions in terms of A and B. So, and then proof analysis is going to compute these labeling functions with respect to the provided partitions. So the, and then use these uh, labeling f functions to do flexible labeling. With respect, again, with the strengths requirement which could be communicated to the tool from the application. And given all this input, so the in interpolator is going to be generated. As you can see, it really can generate any interpolant from what I uh, overviewed to you. So, uh, so the API of the tool provides the application with the full control over the interpolant generation. And it's exactly what was missing prior to this work. So the user, the m software verification, uh, problem now can really talk to the uh, engine which is helping to make verification effective. So many of the routine tasks, like for example, proof reduction, proof compression, are implemented efficiently inside of the tool and uh, they're simply hidden from the user. So, and the system makes it comfortable to construct and experiment with new labeling functions. If whoever wants to suggest some other labeling functions, so uh, feel free and uh, it could be uh, really plugged in into this framework. Here's some just uh, statistics uh, taken from some of the papers. So for example, this uh, table demonstrates how the reduction approach works. And in this case, it was local rewriting rules which minimized the size of the proof as the pre-processing before the interpolant is generated. And uh, so these results are for SMT examples. And uh, so there was a very large number of ben benchmark solved. So as you can see from the second uh, column, and uh, the overhead for the transformation, the time is quite slow, uh, is quite small. So for example, uh, you can again read it from the column. It's, it never exceeds uh, more than 20 seconds. And then you can also see what is the reduction on average for all of this uh, benchmarks solved. And the reduction is quite uh, spectacular. So 
Uh, however, it's not always the case. So it happens to be the case that if the proof is not redundant, then you could not really benefit much from the proof reduction. And in this case, uh, other techniques of like flexible interpolation can be invoked and used for um, better uh, interpolant construction. So uh, we applied, for example, this framework for several applications of bounded model checking for uh, FunFrog and EvolCheck. Uh, those are the two tools developed in our group. So they all, as I already mentioned, use an interpolation-based function summarizations. So summaries are computed and then being reused whenever we have uh, verification of new properties of the same code or verifying different versions of the same program. So this reuse of summaries re is really handy because it localizes the analysis and speed ups verification tremendously. However, in the uh, compactness, the size of the interpolants and the strength of interpolants is essential in this case. For example, it's been um, uh, proven that, for example, for incremental verification, strong interpo interpolants are required. So the weak ones are not really going to give any use. So they only will slow down the analysis, despite of the local nature of function summarization. And for uh, upgrade checking, in the other is true. So weak interpolants are required. So, and here's some statistics uh, on the left-hand side for you. This is FunFrog experimentation, and the right-hand side is the evolve check verification. Again, FunFrog is function summarization-based analysis of the same program against different properties, and evolve check is verification of various versions of the program. And we compared different interpolation algorithms and how they used if you use them for function summarization. And uh, consistently, you can see that uh, flexible, proof-sensitive interpolation consistently wins among any other algorithm. So also what uh, probably uh, should be mentioned here, for example, you can see that for evolve check, we have less experiments because apparently uh, some uh, interpolation algorithms are simply not suitable for upgrade checking. So they don't satisfy the three interpolation properties, therefore they just should not be used at all. So that's uh, some uh, data, and the conclusions is that, that I presented you a, a tool which we call Periplo. It's an interpolation framework for propositional logic. It's generic and uh, flexible. It allows producing interpolants on demand. Pre it provides an API, so it's easy to use. And it focuses in particular on constructing small interpolants because we believe it's um, very essential. And it provides a complete uh, flexibility in terms of strength. So the tool is available at our group website. And we are very, would be very happy if you use it. And uh, if you want, we can uh, collaborate with you in your projects uh, to help you to use it as efficiently as possible. So the future work is that what one of the students, do students is doing now is extending this uh, framework to first order logic. Right, that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. So what does uh, Periflow support in terms of SAT pre-processing and all the different things that uh, sort of the modern solvers can do? Yes, it's open SMT, which implements a lot of things. Yes, essentially. So all of those are folded into right. the proof. And uh, absolutely. Okay. So it's not just some procedures. It's actually a whole suite of all everything which is believed to be the best. So we are competing. We are trying to be, you know. In the SAT competition as well as SMT. No, right. we are competing in SMT, but it reuses a lot of stuff from SAT, right? So. So, and what's the status of theories? In well, uh, we have two versions of open SMT, so because we had the evolution of people who were working on them, so we had a full bunch of theories, but then we went to SMT2 lib. Um, input, so we had to redo a lot of uh, things. So right now, the new version of the tool works for uninterpreted functions, uh, uh, linear arithmetics, so, and uh, difference logic. So there are, like, bit vectors, for example, not working anymore. They used to. <laughs> vectors would be, and the theory of arrays, is that? Uh, no. 
unfortunately it's not supported. kind of user do you have? Is it programmer that write program and you verify their program or is it specialists of interpolation that want to experiment? No, 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 it's exactly the point. Our users are people who are verifying programs. They are not experts in the field at all. Actually, most of our projects are, you know, EU projects or so on. So we have industrial partners. For How do they choose their labeling functions, these guys who do not understand interpolation? So they uh, work with our students, so who explain, you know, things to them. So, but uh, essentially, it's a part of the each EU project. So you explain them how it works, and eventually they figure it out. So they say that I'm more interested in this fragment, you know, than this fragment, and then we suggest them uh, per particular labeling. A programmer that go into the proofs. No, 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 uh, they talk to the student, and student goes ah, to the, the student. Yeah. So yeah. each time you have a programmer that uses right. your system, you need a, a student to help him? Well, in the beginning, and later you ah. hope that they, and they get the intuition how it works, and they're able to guide it themselves. Without going into the proofs. Right, exactly. So from their program. Exactly. So from seeing their program, they are able to anticipate what the tool is going to do by interpolation. Right. Yeah. Extraordinary end users. <laughs> <laughs> Can you maybe say a few sentences about how you imagine the generalization to a uh, first order logic? So, well, the very naive and direct approach is just to extend the flexible interpolation with respect to the um, uh, theories. So, on each particular theory, you just will be labeling to, to the fragments of it. So, and then, which is we still don't know how to do, but we would like to develop new decision procedures more generic as well. So, but right now the student is simply mimicking what's done at the Boolean level to particular theory and see what it means. So this is, yeah, okay. approach. Any other questions? No? So thanks again. <laughs>